Hey guys, Buffer Game back bringing another video today for our weapon convergence series, and today we're covering the classic M4A1 carbine available as part of the UDT Ghost Bundle by purchasing Modern Warfare 2 Remastered on the PlayStation Store, available today for $20 or $19.99, a little bit over $20 with tax. So what this bundle comes with is obviously the Task Force Blueprint for the M4A1, the classic version that we're used to from the Modern Warfare, original Modern Warfare series, specifically Modern Warfare 2. You also get the one-for-one -one blueprint for the M1911 from Modern Warfare 2. You get the UDT Ghost Operator skin, so he's wearing those classic underwater demo team skins that he uses some of the missions in Modern Warfare 2. It looks really nice, especially when equipped with the Task Force Blueprint for the M4A1 that we're gonna be covering in today's video. Other things that you get in that blueprint are the Flipper's Weapon Charm, the Belly Flop finishing move, which really is nothing special. It's a pretty neat looking finishing move, but that's about it. The Stay Frosty Voice Clip, No Easy Days Calling Card, as well as the Ghost Emblem. So again, you get this all available in the PlayStation Store by purchasing Modern Warfare 2 Remastered today, available for $19.99, $21 in total with the tax that I got it for today, released at 1 p.m. So you can go ahead and purchase that, and it's only available for PlayStation today. Pre-orders are available for Xbox and PC. You can download it at the end of the month. Now, by pre-ordering that, I believe you're still able to utilize the UDT bundle that we're covering here with this blueprint. So go ahead and check out the link. I'll try to leave below to the Activision blog or just go ahead and check over there for any additional details. I believe if you pre-order or you purchase it, you'll get that instantly. As soon as I bought it on the PlayStation Store and logged into Modern Warfare, I was prompted with a screen and able to go in and search for my items and everything's there already in the game. So. Let's go ahead and jump right in. We have the classic M4A1. Here's our final design for the M4A1 carbine from Modern Warfare 2. Again, this is a classic M4A1 carbine. Now we're going to go back out. I'll show you what the actual blueprint looks like. So if we go to our M4A1s, we see the Task Force blueprint here. And now if we just compare it to the Purist, which is similar to the attachments that we have just with the M4 that we have in Game of Base, you can see the significant cosmetic differences with the weapon. So you can see the attachments here on the M4A1 for the Task Force are the Flash Guard, the Barrel for the 14.5 Tack Light, Force Tech CQS Stock, the Sled Hand Perk, and the Ranger Foregrip for the Underbrow. This is what it comes with the Task Force Blueprint at base. So go ahead and back out of that. And now we're going to jump into our actual build of the weapon that we're covering here today for the classic M4A1 carbine. So I just changed a couple attachments, stripped this down at base. We have the classic m4 or the m4 that we come comes with modern warfare in the game now we have the lower receiver and the upper receiver as well as the magazine remain the same to the blueprint with the other changes here so let's go ahead and build this from scratch now i'm going to stay true to kind of what the blueprint is with some minor changes so we're going to go ahead and keep the flash guard again this is just going to assist with the muzzle flash concealment the con being bullet velocity there's obviously better in slot options here like a, a muzzle break or a compensator or even a suppressor if you wanted to put something like that on the weapon. So we'll go ahead and select the flash guard. Now the barrel, we're going to want the 14 and a half inch tack light to make it into the M4A1 carbine. So this is going to assist with the aim down sight speed as well as the cons here being the bullet velocity. Now we're going to skip out on the laser as well as for the optic, we're going to use the combat holographic sight just to stay true with the M4A1 carbine. This is going to assist with the precision sight picture. And now we're adding a little bit extra weight to the weapon with the sight itself, that EOTech holographic. So the ADS speed is going to take a slight reduction, but again, nothing major that you'll really notice in game. Now the stock we have right now, that classic Magpul stock that we get in game. What we're going to do is change this to the Forge Tech CQS. This is going to give us that classic M4A1 carbine telescopic buttstock, that adjustable buttstock. So we have here the pros being ADS speed and the cons aiming stability. Let's go ahead and slap that on. We're going to skip out on the perk as well as the rear grip and the ammo. Now the underbarrel, we're going to stay true what the blueprint is, is the Ranger foregrip is one of my favorite in-slot weapons. You can also go with something like a commando if you don't want to take the ADS bump for that, but again, not a big deal there. So the pros for this are going to be the recoil control as well as the aiming stability, the cons being aim walking movement speed as well as aim down sight speed. So go ahead and put that on. This is the final design for the classic M4A1 carbine for the Task Force blueprint. Now some changes here, if I just back out once more, you see our task force build here for the M4A1 carbine compared to the same attachments on the base M4 available in game. So you can see the significant differences cosmetically to the weapon, specifically the rail system, as well as the barrel, the lower receiver, and the buttstock, as well as the magazine. So go ahead and jump on this. The changes that we have is we have the classic M4A1 barrel. We have a Picatinny rail on the hand, 
quad rail for the Picatinny rail and the handguard, which again only has about eight Picatinny slots on it, and it's much a much shorter handguard. We have the rubber rubber stoppers on the left and right hand side of the handguard. So again, these are just rubber covers to go on the left and right. We have four in total, two on each side, left and right. So again, the exact same from the Modern Warfare 2 campaign as well as the multiplayer build. We have that classic M4 A1 adjustable buttstock we have the lower receiver in udt green as well as with the buttstock and the rubber stoppers on the handguard as well as in that udt green other changes are the stenag mag we have a classic stenag mag 30 round stenag mag with the electrical black electrical tape on there for a little bit extra grip on the weapon now if i were to just preview this some nice cosmetic additions to the right end of the weapon we see here on the lower receiver fs15 tactical carbine obviously in reference to the ar15 which is what this platform is the armor light 15 is what the m4 as well as the m16s are based off of we also see the forged tack on the lower receiver there in the udt green 556 millimeter 556 by 45 no so cal 556 millimeter forged tack and then obviously we just have the same writing on the holographic sites and some additional writing on the right-hand side of the weapon as well. So nothing major there. We have FFS Tactical for the rail system on the weapon. Uh, and obviously the changes just being with the pistol grip as well there is similar to the lower receiver with that UDT green. So how does this look if we put any different attachments on there? Obviously any stock is not going to retain the UDT color on the rubber pads on the handguard. Like we see with the, the Kurovis Custom Marksman doesn't have that UDT green. The barrel, any other barrel attachment will look fine on this. We see like a tactical suppressor. Let's go ahead and keep the flash. Now a laser, it's going to be the same mount as for the standard M4 in game. Just mounted on the top Picatinny there. Obviously any sight is going to look uh, similar to the M4. Again, we have a nice slip sight there. It's similar to what we see kind of in Modern Warfare 3. So we can do a lot of different builds with this. The buttstock, again, if we, we saw what it looked like deselected, but any other stock in game is going to look like it does on the standard M4 that's available. The rear grip, again, just going to add that tape on there. No changes to the actual pistol grip besides the tape. And then ammunition, any other, anything else is going to look the same. So you get the 50 and 60 round Stenag mags, the 9mm, and the 458 SOCOM rounds as well. So with that base 30 round mag, you go from a Magpul P mag to the 30 round steel Stenag mag on the M4A1 carbon. Now also available in this bundle really quick is a one for one blueprint for the m1911 so you can see here this is the same one similar to what we see in modern warfare 2 especially in the campaign we have the tape on the pistol grip there some other grip tape around the weapon as well as the udt green camo and some different attachments we have the m1911 striker with a five milliwatt the red dot sight fully loaded perk as well as the heavy duty trigger on the weapon which is going to assist with aiming stability aim walking steadiness but the fire rate is going to take a decrease there but you can see Syngard Arms on there, 45 ACP, so a very nice looking blueprint overall. If we jump back to our M4, again, this is the final design for the classic M4A1 carbine. Let's go ahead now, jump in game, take a look at the recoil pattern, and see how it handles in-game against bots, and I'll also take out the holographic sight, and we'll see how the iron sights look in-game as well. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, now that we're in-game with our classic M4A1 carbine for the Task Force blueprint, let's go ahead and see how it handles. And what I'm going to do is just let this rip full auto and we'll see how the recoil controls. Let's go ahead and let it fire. So there you can see it's going straight vertical and then deviating slightly to the right and up again. So let's try and control it a little bit here. So you can see there we get a little bit of horizontal and vertical recoil that you can control. It's really just a matter of how you are controlling the recoil. One thing to note is that we don't have the best attachments on since we're trying to stay cosmetically true to the weapon. So there you can see more so horizontal recoil if we're controlling it. And there we're able to keep it pretty tight as well. So these are nice center mass shots right here. Horizontal recoil you just need to compensate for. You can see really it's really just it's going to depend on how you are controlling the recoil. So one more time we'll just let it rip. So that, again pretty tight center mass shots. You can see overall how nice the weapon looks. Just... And then we have our 1911 one for one blueprint here. You can see while we're reloading. So that's the recoil pattern on the M4A1 carbine for the Task Force blueprint. Let's go ahead now and jump in game and see how it handles in game against bots. Okay, now that we're in game with our M4A1 carbine, 
for the task force blueprint which we created let's go ahead and see how it handles in game here against bots so again this is available it's part of the udt ghost bundle when you purchase modern warfare 2 remastered in the playstation store currently and i think you can get this bundle just by pre-ordering it on the xbox and pc as well even though you won't be able to play the campaign until the end of april but again Go ahead and check that out on the Activision blog. We should, you should all be able to get this just by pre-ordering and purchasing the weapon. As soon as I bought it and logged into Modern Warfare, I had everything available for the bundle, from the operator to the weapons, as well as the emblems and other equipment available with that bundle. So go ahead and check that out. See if you're able to download that. Again, you can see here, very nice looking blueprint for the M4A1 carbine. Only for $19.99 is you get all these items, including the Task Force blueprint, the pistol, as well as the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered only for $20. So pretty good price tag on that weapon. And you can see how it handles here. Again, we don't have the best attachments on for recoil control, but we want to stay true to the design itself. And you can see just the reload animations, hitting the, the bolt lock on the weapon, the no forward assist being utilized in the reload animation, unfortunately. But... You can see how nice it looks overall with this classic design that we're used to from Modern Warfare 2. So let me know down below what you guys think of this blueprint. Again, creating the classic M4 carbine in real life. This has been in service, obviously, the most widely used weapon in the U.S. military. It's been in service since 1994 through present. It's gone through multiple iterations, upgrades, and variations. We have the Soap Mod, Block 1s, as well as the Mark 18 or the MK-18s for the Mod 0, Mod 1s, or Block 0, Block 1 available based off of the stoner design from the vietnam war whoa ran out of ammo there unfortunately now it's been used in many wars this has essentially been using since the colombian conflict that we saw the original m16s in the vietnam war the car 15s which is the cult variation of this essentially which the m4 was upgraded to from the car 15 uh, used in Mogadishu and back in the 90s, right before the M4 came into service in 1994. Reload here. So again, this is a lighter variant, essentially, of the M16A2 or the Armalite 15. Nice. So you can see how how nice it handles and just cosmetically these are the type of blueprints i like to see in game these nice cosmetic changes to the weapon uh that really significantly enhance the way the weapon looks at base so now real life the design period for this was 1984 through 1993 and then coming in service right in 1994 Again, they were using Car 15s in Mogadishu or Colt 15 models, and then this was a essentially a predecessor of that adopted by the U.S. Army to fill that more short barrel, lighter weight profile of the M16. So the design period, like I said, ended in 1993, right before it came in service. The unit cost $700. Production was 1991 through present. Variants are the M4A1 as well as the Mark 18s. We have the soap mods as well. Very extensive uh, variations and customization on the M4 builds. The mass, when it's empty for the M4, is going to be 6.63 pounds. And when we have a 30-round Stenag bag, it's going to be 7.75 pounds. Now, the length of the M4 with the buttstock extended is going to be 33 inches. Oh, my God. Missed every shot. So it's going to be 33 inches with the buttstock extended, 29.75 with it retracted. The barrel length, as we said, is going to be a 14.5 inch barrel to create the M4A1 that we see here. The cartridge is a 556 by 45 Now we have multiple different magazines available in game. We have the 30 round, which typically comes with a Stenag mag, or excuse me, the P mag, Magpul P mag, with that clear window on the magazine. Here we have with this blueprint a steel 30 round Stenag mag. We also have available a 50 and 60 round Stenag mag on the weapon as well as the 9mm conversion kit and the 458 Beowulf conversion kit as well on the weapon. Jeez. Again, with the high rate of fire of the M4, the 30 round magazine, you can see how quickly we're, we're mag dumping with this.
Now the action for the M4 is going to be a gas operated rotating bolt stoner expanded gas design. Rate of fire on this is going to be 700 and 700 to 950 rounds per minute. I definitely hear a shotgun somewhere. There we go. There you can see how inaccurate the hip fire is in this game, unfortunately. It's something like Tarkov, where it's very, obviously where you're pointing the barrels where the bullets are going to go. But not in Call of Duty. The bullets go everywhere, unfortunately. Let's see. So the feed system, again, 30 round box magazine we covered what it comes in in this game effective firing range is going to be 500 meters or 550 yards and then what i'll do here in a minute is take off the holographic sight and we'll take a look at the iron sights it's going to be the exact same as the standard m4 in game or the xrk blueprint as well it's a nice large aperture for you to get eyes on target quickly so let me know down below what you think again this is part of the udt bundle available in store when you purchase modern warfare 2 remastered overall like i said i love the i love the blueprint design Oh my god. Merciless bots. So again, let me know down below what you think of this. this is available for everybody today. Uh, you won't be able to play the campaign for Modern Warfare 2 Remastered until April 30th if you're on the PC or the Xbox, but I believe everybody should get this bundle just by if you pre-order on the other consoles, or if you buy this on PlayStation, obviously you'll get access to this right away. As soon as I bought it, I was able to get access to it. So let me know down below what you think. Also, let me know what kind of weapons you're expecting for Season 3. I know we're going to be getting an SKS is the rumor, as well as another pistol in-game. Maybe we'll get lucky and get something with fully automatic features on it for a perk I think would be really nice to see. So let me know down below what you think. What kind of blueprints do you want to see going forward? I know now that with Modern Warfare Remastered is out, I think we can expect to see a lot of different blueprints from that game, such as the AK-47. I can almost guarantee we're going to get a nice modernized looking AKM, AK-47 blueprint now that Modern Warfare 2 Remastered is out. So I'll be sure to cover that when that comes. I can imagine getting AK-47 blueprints, MP5 blueprints, pretty much any weapon that was in Modern Warfare 2. We'll be getting some sort of blueprint, just as we see here, available in this game in Season 3, as well as beyond, especially if they end up releasing Modern Warfare 3 Remastered sometime soon as well. We will be also get access to any other additional blueprints from that game. So go ahead and let me know down below what you think. Again, this is the M4A1 Carbine conversion from the Task Force Blueprint, available for the UDT Ghost Bundle by purchasing or pre-ordering Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. I'm Buffner Gaming with the M4A1 Carbine. Until next time, Buffner Gaming, out.